This is the Without Losing Your Cool podcast. We have entrepreneurs, climate changers, entertainers, and survivors turned thrivers. You do not want to miss a thing. Here's the thing. I understand that I have male and female demographic watching Without Losing Your Cool podcast. But today, I want to talk to you ladies out there because I was in a conversation with a woman that I do business with. We have been in a business relationship for almost two years now, and we know each other fairly well. We know about each other's personal lives, and we're close. I would consider us not only business associates, but friends. So we were having a conversation about this, the podcast, how it looks, how it sounds, how it feels, where are we going when we go forward into season three, which is where we are right now. And it was interesting. I was being firm not rude, not disrespectful, but I was communicating my disappointments from the season before, things I'd like to see change, things that I would like to be different. And my friend, also my producer, started to apologize. She was like, I'm so sorry. Do do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? And I was like, bitch, stop with that. Stop apologizing. You can say what you need to say. I'm saying what I need to say. You can say what you need to say. Be authentic. Be real. Be genuine. Speak your truth and do so without apologizing. Ladies, why are we always apologizing? Why am I screaming? Because I'm fired up about this. Why do we do this? What is it about us that makes us think that when we're being firm, when we're standing in our power, when we are standing in our truth, when we communicate that, we quickly follow that up with a, I'm sorry, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, I know what you're trying to say. You're responding to my firmness with matched firmness. And I respect that. I appreciate that. And we need more of that because you know what? I can tell you when the men are out there on the golf course, hitting the balls, talking about how they just dominated this guy or that guy in business, they're not telling their friends how they quickly followed that email up with a, I'm sorry. Do you know what I was trying to say? That's some bullshit. We need to stop. Ladies, we need to stop. There's nothing to be sorry for. It is okay to communicate in a way that is assertive, that is clear, that has no mixed messages. There's nothing to make sense of here. It's just you expressing yourself. Now, I'm not saying go out there, burn shit down, start abusing people in your circle who you do business with. All of a sudden, you're going to turn that switch on and you're going to just like burn everything down. I'm not talking about that kind of communication. I'm talking about when you know that you're speaking truthfully when you know that you're asking for your needs to be met, when you know that you're saying something that makes complete and utter sense, why are you asking if it makes sense? Why are you apologizing? Enough. Enough with that. It is okay. It is more than okay for us to go forward into this world confidently, boldly, fearlessly. It's totally fine. Like I said, our counterpart, The men out there are not doubting themselves. They are not asking for permission to be authoritative. And I think we need to really witness how we are, how we're showing up in our business relationships, hell, in our friendships. I've had situations where I've let people walk all over me in a friendship because I thought they were higher than me. Do you guys suffer from that? Do you suffer from feeling like some of your friends are out of your league and you're just lucky to be breathing the air that they breathe? And aren't you so fortunate that they've shone their light and their affection and their time they've given it to you? I am totally, totally guilty of that. I grew up not having a lot of girlfriends. Girls didn't really like me and I carried that into my adulthood. And what I have discovered about myself is that I apologize for being my true self in friendships too. That when I stand my ground, when I create my boundaries, when I'm like, you know what? The way you treat me, the way you don't respond to messages, the way you don't call me back, it hurts. It doesn't feel good. I don't like that. That's not the kind of friendship that I want to be a part of. And then I find myself going, wow, that's really too needy. I mean, I'm just lucky that this person 
calls me back at all. They're so busy. Stop. Enough. Enough. Boundaries. 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 We need to have them. It's not a dirty word. We need to have them. We need to establish them in our friendships. We need to establish them in our business relationships. It's okay to look around and take stock and recognize that some people in your circle are not meeting your needs, that some people that you are in relationship with are not treating you as the queen that you are, as the person you deserve to be, that in your line of work, in business, when you speak up, when you have ideas, that people are not respecting you as an intelligent person, as somebody with something to offer. You do not need to accept anything but somebody's best. And that includes your own, your own best. So honestly, do me a solid. Stop apologizing and start living within your own clear communication of what it is you're trying to get out of what you're building. For me, it's this podcast. I had no issue with speaking to my friend about the things that really I felt could be better on my part and on her part. And she received it entirely. And then when she gave me back her feedback, she felt like maybe she was a little too firm. She was a little too strong and she's younger than me. So I had to tell her the same way I would tell my daughters. I respect that. I respect you and you are safe with me. And it is important in our friendships when we are going to have those tough conversations, we say, preface it. Listen, this is going to be a tough conversation. I'm going to share my truth and I'm going to speak in a way that is firm and clear. And I want you to know it's coming from love. And I want you to know that we are in a relationship that I know we both respect and we both trust one another. So when we communicate in this tough conversation, you can trust me that I'm not being disrespectful, that I'm not out here trying to hurt you. I'm not undermining your qualities, your ability, and your value, but I need you to hear what I need differently from you in this relationship, whether it's a business relationship or an intimate relationship. There's nothing wrong with prefacing a tough conversation, reminding that person that you are talking to that, guess what? I love you, but I got to say some shit to you right now. It might be hard for you to hear, but you can trust me that it comes from love, that it is rooted in love, that it is rooted in respect. And when we remind each other that we can communicate truthfully while being respectful and coming from a place from love, guess what happens? The relationships grow deeper. You get closer and trust grows. The, the trust in that friendship, in that business relationship, it gets deeper. It's bound together by the understanding that we are rowing in a ship going in the same direction. That you don't ever have to ask me again, do you know what I mean? And you don't have to say, I'm sorry, but no buts here. There are no buts here. If you're disrespectful, though, I don't take you out at your knees. That's just for some people who may be watching this who know who they are. But <laughs> for those of you who are mutually respectful, I am always going to lead with love. I am always going to lead with respect. And I am open and available at all times to have tough conversations. And I think that those of you who are listening right now who maybe don't have that confidence, meditate on that. Journal on that. Ask yourself, make a list. I, I had to do this for years because I wasn't very confident. I doubted myself. I doubted my instincts. I doubted my right to speak with, with conviction. And so what I had to do is I had to start working on the whys. Why do I think that my thoughts, my feelings aren't as valued as the person who is, let's say, has the upper hand, upper leg, whatever you want to call it, in this relationship. And without losing your cool, we've got your gift giving needs covered. Whether it's a holiday gift, if it's a support gift, if it's a little extra love that somebody in your life needs gift, or a parent who needs a little more guidance, advice, and the knowing that they are not alone out there in their parenting journey, we have got you covered. If you know somebody who is deepening their relationship to self, grab them the self-love bundle. It includes the Loving Yourself Without Losing Your Cool book, Loving Yourself journal that accompanies the book, and Love Notes for Adults. 
If you have somebody in your life who's expecting or has a little from zero to 10, then the Raising Kids Bundle is the perfect gift set for them. It comes with the Raising Your Kids Without Losing Your Cool and Love Notes for Littles. If you have a parent in your inner circle who is heading into tween and teendom, boy, have we got the gift set for you. Parenting your teens without losing your cool comes with love notes for tweens or teens. You get to choose. All of this is available for you at ChantelBisson.com. If you're shopping ChantelBisson.com for the very first time, don't forget to add yourself to the newsletter to claim your shopping discount code. Go now. And what I started to understand is that as a young girl, I had to go all the way back to my childhood. As a young girl, I was afraid of no. And the only way I could get affection and attention from my dad was to be submissive, was to be quiet and do what he asked and never ask for my own needs from him to be met. So it started a pattern. I was just lucky to have him shine his love on me. And that started a pattern in friendships. And that started a pattern in my marriage. And I started to lose myself and get very, very meek. And what happened is it went internal. And I started to have conflict within myself. And I started to doubt that I was worthy of having any needs met. And you know what happens when that, when you live like that? You implode from the inside out. So if you are right now in this position where you never, ever ask for what you need, And if you are constantly saying sorry, when you finally do speak up and ask or assert yourself, I want you to go right now, when you're done watching this, open a blank page. It doesn't need to be a journal. It can be a piece of printing paper. It can be a note on your phone. I want you to start asking yourself, where does this come from? What was my childhood like? What was my relationship with my parents like? Was love, affection, and closeness, was it easily attainable with my parents? If it was, great. You're ahead of most of us out here in the world. If that's not the problem, then start to look outside of that. Look into your social circles. What were you like in school? What were your friendships like? Did you fit in? Were you relegated to being at the bottom of the friend pack that you couldn't, you know, It's the weekend. Everybody's having a sleepover. You put your hand up, let's play this game. And everyone laughs and says no. So you start to shut down. Just start to explore. Ask yourself the questions of why. Why do I feel uncomfortable speaking my truth? Why am I apologizing for asking for my needs to be met? The onus is on you to figure it out. It's not on your friend's shoulders. It's not on your partner's shoulders. It's you. You are 100,000% in the driver's seat of what you get out of your relationships, what you get out of your job, what you get out of this one beautiful, messy thing called life. It's all in there, inside you. Call it out. Become familiar with yourself. Ask the tough questions. Write it out. Cry, pray, meditate, go for long walks. But at the end of the day, I strongly, strongly recommend that you get to the bottom of why you make excuses for people and why you let people have power over you and authority over you. You are a big girl. Put your big girl pants on and get out there and kick ass and live the life that you deserve. Understood? And welcome to season three, you guys. It's going to be a good one. I'm so grateful you joined in on this conversation. Subscribe where you're listening. Leave a comment. Connect with us on social media for more. And all the links, you can find them in the show notes. We will see you at the next one.